Good day, Grade 10s. We are continuing to learn about the periodic table. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about formulae in halides and oxides. Let's start by talking about the halogens. We know the halogens are group 7, and they're made up of the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and acetine. Now, we don't worry about acetine. We just look at fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Halides are basically a halogen plus a metal. A hydrogen plus a metal always make an ionic salt. The most common of these that we're used to using are sodium chloride, which is known as table salt. And here's a little picture so you know what you're talking about. So these are called halides. Now what we need to know is how do halides bond? The ratio of the halide ions to the metal ions depend on the valency of the metal ions. Now, valency is a measure of the atom's ability to bond. Now, remember that valence electrons are the number of electrons in your outer energy shell, whereas valency is a measure of the atom's ability to bond. We use the periodic table to determine the valency of the elements. So, if we look at this, and I just want to change to a pen and change to blue, okay, we see the group number and we see one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 0 in this case. Now what is that telling us? That is telling us that we're in group 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And we have learned that that tells us the number of valence electrons. But remember now that every atom is trying to become a noble gas. So the options are either to lose electrons or gain electrons in order to become a noble gas. So the way this works is groups 1, 2, 3, and 4, well actually 1, 2, and 3 will lose electrons to become noble. Group 4, because it's halfway, it can go either way. Group 5 will gain electrons, group 7, and uh, group 6 and grade 7 will gain, and obviously group 8 or 0 doesn't need electrons at all. So we know group 1, group, group 1 has a valency of 1, group 2 has a valency of 2, Group 3 has a valency of 3, 4, and then it goes 3, 2, 1, and back to 0. So that is how the valency works. Valency is really the number of bonds it can make. So what we're saying is hydrogen can make one bond, beryllium can two, boron can make three bonds, carbon four, and then nitrogen three, and so on and so on. So that is the number of bonds or the valency of the different atoms. Now if we look at a nice table, we can make a nice table that helps us look at our halides. Because remember what we said, a halogen plus a metal atom makes an ionic salt and that is a halide. So if we're in group 1, we are going to have a valency of 1. If we're in group 2, we're going to have a valency of 2. And if we're in group 3, we're going to have a valency of 3. So if we fill that in nicely, we can see that here are our groups of valencies 1, 2, and 3. Our halogens are all in group 7. So they have a valency of minus 1. In other words, they want to gain one electron. So if we had to then draw, use this, we can see that one of these will join up with one of those to form MX, a compound where that's the metal and that is the halide. If we had a metal in group 2, it has got two arms or the ability to make two bonds. The halogens only got one, so we need two halogens to fill up our one metal. Similarly, if we're in group 3, we're going to have three possibilities or three bonds, okay, valency of three, so we're going to need three halogens, and I'm writing halogens like this, H-A-L. We're going to need three halogens to fill it up. So we need three MX3. So let's look at an example. And the first example we're going to look at is lithium bromide. So we look at lithium and we see that lithium is in group 1. And bromide obviously is in group 7 since we're talking about the halogens. So if we go back to our table, we can see that we spoke about lithium, which is in group 1. And we have our halogens, which, is in, which means that we're using our compound MX, which means that we should be writing, oops, we should be looking at lithium bromide. MX, okay? The metal's one and the bromide is one. Right. 
Now let's look at another example. Let's look at aluminium chloride. So aluminium is over here and it is group 3. So group 3 means it's got a valency of 3 and again we're talking about chloride which is a halogen, it's chlorine, so it's also got 1. So if we go back to our table, we're looking at aluminium which is in group 3 and we're looking at chlorine which is in group 1. So we can see that it's got to be 1 aluminium and then it's CL3. So it's aluminium chloride. Right, now let's look at the oxides. The oxides are basically oxygen, right? Everything that ends with the oxygen or bonds with the oxygen forms an oxide and you get metal oxides. So oxygen is in group 6, it has 6 valence electrons, therefore it has a valency of 2 because remember all the atoms except for helium are trying to get 8 electrons in the outer energy shell. So oxygen has a valency of 2. So if we have to draw a table, again, we've got our metal atoms, valency 1, 2, and 3. This time, our oxygen has a valency of 2. Negative 2, because it needs to gain 2 electrons. So if we have to write our compound, we see that we need 2 metals to fill up 1 oxygen. 2 and 2 makes 1, it doesn't have to, so it's 1 each. But now let's look at the metals in group 3. The metals in group 3 have got three valence electrons. That's what it looks like. And oxygen has a valency of minus 2. So let's just see how that would bond. So you've got your metal here, which has got 3. And then you've got your oxygen, which has got 2. So obviously now we need another oxygen which means we need another metal, which is going to be one, two, three, and then finally we need two. So do you see that we've got two metals and we've got three oxygens, two metals and three oxygens. So we can fill that in. But there is a shortcut and that is just to swap the valencies over. So if we go back, we know that the metal has got three plus and the oxygen has got 2 minus. So do you see we could swap them over and we'd end up with M2O3 and that means that we have now got what we want and that is a quick way to swap them over. So let's do an example of magnesium oxide. Magnesium is in group 2. Oxide obviously is in group 6. So again if we look at our table we've got group 2 Okay, magnesium and our oxygen. So that is just going to give us a very nice, easy MgO. So right, great tens, I hope that you now know how to work out the equations for your halides and your oxides. Thank you for joining me and enjoy your day.